In this video we're going to be making a battle axe like the one I'm showing you here using Maya 2016. This was originally done by Casey Jones using Maya 2014 but the interface has changed so I'm doing an updated version. Alright we want to start with a new scene so select new scene if you haven't already and you can turn the grid on or off by clicking this icon right here. I'm going to leave mine off and we are going to start with a regular cylinder. On the right over here you want to turn on the channel box. This is top right icon. Go down under input where it says poly cylinder 1 and change the height to 10 and below that it says subdivisions we also want to change that to 10 and this will form the handle of our battle axe on the top right select the modeling toolkit and make sure you have camera base selection turned on hold down right click and select face that'll put us in face mode and we want to grab all of the faces on top of this cylinder just like that and from here we will press control E so hold down control press E press R to scale and we will scale this in uniformly to form the shaft of the battle axe and then I will press control E again to extrude grab this arrow pointing up and bring the shaft up just like that. Then I will press control E again, press R to scale, scale out about like that to form a cap for the head of the battle axe to sit on and press control E to extrude Oops, messed up. And we'll grab this arrow and pull that up just a little bit like that. Then press Control E again and extrude that out. We want that to come out to be about the same length as our original cylinder. Not quite as much. But this will form the head of our battle axe. So about like that. Once you've got that, press Control E to extrude, press R to scale, scale it out, press Control E again, bring it up, press Control E one more time, R to scale, and bring it in. So now we've got a cap on the top and the bottom and we want to put a spike on top of this so press control E and pull that up to however tall you want your spike to be I'm going to go about half as long as the head hold down right click and select vertex we want to grab these top vertices only go up to edit mesh and click merge to center and that will form the spike for the top of our battle axe. Now go into face mode and select all of the faces on the head of the battle axe. So I'm holding down shift until I have all of these guys selected. Okay and then press R to scale and that's going to bring out a set of vertices or a set of axes rather and you want to look at these two horizontal axes one of these is going to come right through the seam of these faces the other is going to come right through the middle of one face so you can see that this one is coming right through the middle 
I'm going to hold shift and deselect that face. Then I'm going to rotate 180 degrees and deselect this face as well. So I should have four faces selected on both sides. Once you've got that, you can press Control E to extrude, press R to scale, and scale this out uniformly on both sides. And you can see we're forming the head of our battle axe. Once you've brought it out, go up and click on wireframe mode. Hold down right click and select vertex. We want to select all of the vertices on this side of the axe head. So drag a box around those. And if you're still in scale mode, you can grab this square right here. Whoops, I made a mistake. On the right here where it says camera based selection, we want to turn that off now. That way I can grab all of the vertices. And then we will scale those out to the end until they're all lined up. So it should look like that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So select all of these, scale until they're all lined up. So it should look like a hammer. Okay. The next thing we want to do is go into edge mode and select these edges. Go up to mesh tools, go down to insert edge loop and click the box. When this menu opens up, take a look at these options. You want to select multiple edge loops and make sure this number is set to 2. And once you've got that, click and notice it's going to give us a new set of edges in here and we'll do the same thing on the other side select these edges and click on one of those edges and now we have a new set of edges inside our battle axe from here you can close that, that menu out we'll go back into vertex mode and select all of these vertices press R to scale and we're going to scale those until they're all lined up it puts them in with a little bit of a curve we don't want that curve so I'm showing you how to fix that select the next set of vertices line those up and we'll do it for the other side as well be careful not to select any vertices you don't want and it should look like that Next, drag a box around all of the vertices on one side, hold shift, grab all of the vertices on the other side, and we scale it out from here. This will actually form the size of our axe head. So you may want to zoom out a little bit and kind of get an idea of how big it is. I'm going to go with that right there. Then I'm going to select all the vertices on the end. Hold down shift, select all the vertices on the other end. This time we're going to scale in the Y direction. So you can see it starts to form the blade of our axe. Then I will select the next set of vertices, hold down shift, select them on the other side as well, and scale in the Y direction. Do it one more time. Whoops one more time, scale in the Y direction, and you can come back and adjust this later if you want to, but I think that's pretty good for right now. The next thing we want to do is form the blade of the axe, so select all the vertices in the top right corner, go up to edit mesh, and click merge to center. That way they all converge on that one point. And do the same thing on the other three corners. Edit Mesh, Merge to Center. Just 
repeat that same process. And you can see it's forming the blade of that battle axe. Next, select the vertices, the next set of vertices towards the inside. Hold down shift. Make sure you get both sides. That way everything we do is done uniformly. Press R to scale. And we're going to scale this in horizontally to make our blade a little sharper. You can take it out of wireframe mode if you want to. Go back into shaded mode. That might give you a better view. But we're just scaling those in horizontally. And we'll do the same thing with the next set of vertices. So I'll drag a box around those. Hold shift. Drag a box around these. And scale that in. Just like that. Next thing I want to do is select the multi-cut tool, which is right here. So click on that. Hold down shift and approach the blade of the battle axe on this edge and click one time. When you hold down shift, it's going to create a new vertex right in the middle of this edge. Then you're going to right click off of the battle axe, hold down shift, and we'll add one more vertex towards the top. Right click off. Hold down shift. And we'll add a third vertex at the bottom. And that gives us three new vertices along that edge. So we can add some curvature to this blade. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Right click off. Hold down shift. Click in the middle. And repeat that process. Until you have three vertices on both sides. Click the selection tool and select the middle vertex on either side. On the right over here we're going to close out the modeling toolkit and that should bring us back to the channel box. In the channel box you should you should see an option that says CVs click to show. You want to click on that in the X column, enter a 2. Now you notice it pulled that vertex towards the center of the battle axe 2 units. I don't want it pulled towards the center, I want it pulled out. So if it pulled yours in, you want to change that to a negative 2. If it pulled it out when you just entered a 2, that's great, but you'll have to put in a 2 for the other side. So on the other side, I will drag a box around that vertex, go to my X column, and put 2. For these vertices, above the middle and below the middle, we want a negative 1. So click on CVs, X, I'm sorry, we want a 1.5. So I'll put a negative 1.5. Do the same thing for this guy, negative 1.5. And you can see that's adding some curvature to my blade. On the other side, they're not negative, just 1.5 and 1.5. And there we go. Last of all, we want to doll up the handle just a little bit. We're going to add a spike to the bottom of it to match the top. So click on your modeling toolkit and select camera base selection. Right click, go into face mode and select the faces on the bottom of this handle. Just like that. Press control E to extrude. Press R to scale, and we'll scale it out. Press Control E again to extrude. And I'm going to drag that down just a little.
Press Control E again and R to scale. We'll scale back in. Extrude one more time. Dragging that arrow straight down until I've got enough to form a spike here. And we'll do it just like we did at the top. Go into Vertex. Whoops. Go to Vertex. Select all these vertices at the bottom. Go to Edit Mesh and Merge to Center. So now we got a nice little spike on the bottom of our handle. And then to look it over, you can go into Object Mode, click off of the Battle Axe, and view it from whatever angle you want. And this is a pretty nice Battle Axe. This is probably the sharpest digital Battle Axe I've ever seen. So if you had some digital butter, or maybe even a carrot or something, there's no doubt in my mind that this axe would cut right through it. So if you made it this far, well done. Save your work and we will texture this at a later date.